Doing, man. Good, you, good. How do you assess uh, Janovec's performance tonight? Got a grade for it? Uh, well, you know, it's like this. We needed this. We needed a fight like this. I mean, when we had to make some adjustments, you know I mean, against a guy that wasn't going anywhere. You know, I told Johnny Beck yesterday, this guy has everything to gain, nothing to lose. So those are the worst guys in the world to fight. You know what I mean? Because they're going to put it on the line. I mean, you know what I mean? And the guy did tonight, not taking nothing away from him, him and his team, but they did a great job. But, you know, Johnny Beck made those minor adjustments the last three rounds and uh, closed the show like a champ. You know, sometimes they say the, the fighters fight up or down the level opposite. There you go. Did that happen? That's it. Yes, yes. And he thought he was going to get a quick knockout. And then uh, when it didn't happen, now we had to make adjustments. And then uh, in the middle of making adjustments, the guy started coming on. So I said, okay, look, we can't box this guy. We got to back him up, keep him on his heels. And when he did that, he had control. He almost had him out of there in the last round. Yeah. Uh, did you think he could have maybe gone for it a little bit more there? You know what? It's hard to say because he took a lot of body shots. I mean, this guy was tough, man. This yeah. guy was tough, you know? So, I mean, you know, the mind says, yeah, but the body's like, look, let's just get through the round. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did Bentley do a good job in the beginning, just getting through the rounds and yeah. not, not biting on the feints? Exactly, and, yes. Yeah. The first two rounds, he was biting. After that, he stopped, and he seen that Johnny was going for the one punch. So he took advantage of that. But once Johnny stepped on the gas, all right. What's what's Johnny Beck got to work on the most? You feel like, and what part of his game? I mean, you know, you gotta when you make guys miss, you gotta make them pay. But with more than one punch. That's what I was gonna say. He didn't really throw more than one once right. in a while too. But there wasn't any like three or four no punches. combinations, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, but you know, and so he went. To, we all went to school today. <laughs> hey, buddy. Um, you know, obviously he's been labeled as the boogeyman, and you know, there, yeah. you used to have seen him knocking people out. This is the first time I believe going twelve rounds. Yes. Do you feel like this is going to open up more opportunities? Maybe people. Hopefully, might hopefully people now people might say, "Look, I'll fight him now." But what they don't understand is when they fight him, he arrives to that occasion. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the the Charlo fight, buddy? How would that look? Hey, listen, I, I mean, I, I'm with my guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm with, I'm with. I think he's the best middleweight in the world. The fight that seems like the most possible, even though he probably doesn't want it, is Triple G, just because he's a promotional they're free both, agent. And they're both from Kazakhstan. That's what I mean. He yeah. may not want to do it, but they don't even spar each other. There's two belts on the line. There's, yeah. you know, there's, and it's, it's an actual doable fight uh, promotionally. Well, let's see. You know, we keep our fingers crossed. Did he did he say anything to you yet after the fight? Did no, he, no, he, he yeah. probably give me a call in about a week. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But right now, you know, uh, you know, he's been uh, in those deep waters for the first time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just let him leave, leave him be. What's your thoughts on maybe like a mandatory of Mungia? He's kind of been sitting there. Well, he needs, push. right now, I'm not even, I, I just want to see the man go home. And he's been, <laughs> yeah. he, he hasn't seen his family in like four months, man. Mm -hmm. oh, so, wow. you know, I just want him to go home and, and enjoy himself and then come back next year and we'll pick up where we left off. When would you like to see him return if it was up to you? February, March. Okay, so come back I mean, shortly. Mm -hmm. I'm an old school guy. I believe not taking off too long. Yeah, I know. Keep the keep them sharp. Yeah. What's up next for you? I'm heading to England tomorrow. I got Dylan White fighting uh, in two weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. And how do you uh, see that fight playing out? I mean, you know, uh, Dylan is very, very tricky, very awkward style, crazy style, but it's effective for him. So the key is just sharpen it up a little bit. And it, it's another one of those kind of like like with um, Janabek, like who do you want to fight next? Well, with White, they're saying maybe you get Joshua. And it's dangerous, as you know, to, to look well, ahead. I, yeah, you don't put the cart before the horse. I'm a firm believer in that. Mm -hmm. and, and just you know, my whole thing about the transition, him working with you. You know, what do you like about White and what do you like about working with you? I like about him is that he, uh, he listens and he asks questions. I mean, he doesn't like listen and then give his, you know, then say, well, look, I'm used to doing it like this. No. He listens and he asks questions. And here's the main thing. He goes, well, then show me. If you can't show the guy, how are you going to tell somebody to do something if you can't show them? So I show him and I said, you don't have to do it the same way I do it, but the key is to get the same result. How did you like uh, Balderas tonight? Too? Good. I mean, yeah. it's a fight that uh, he needed as well. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? He needed to get those eight rounds on this belt. I mean, now you're in the big leagues now, you know what I mean? Well, buddy, I just got to ask uh, about, about some, some big ones maybe coming up. Just Benavidez Plant. Do you got a winner in that fight, buddy? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Plant. Like the boxer? Is that what and he's fought better opposition. Mm -hmm. you no, know, he's been in the deep waters already. So. 
you know, it's going to be interesting, though. Yeah. Do you think switching uh, um, to, to Breadman did something for him, too? I mean, I've never seen him <laughs> you know, knock someone out like that. My thing is this. Sometimes a loss makes you a better fighter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or a better athlete than anything. Sometimes you need that loss to make you realize, hey, man, I got to step outside the picture a little bit and look at everything and see what's going on and correct the mistakes. And it made him a better fighter, I, I believe. Thanks, buddy. buddy. You were uh, talking about Janovic being someplace he's never been tonight. So in those championship rounds, what did you say to him or what did you not say to him? I said, let's close the show like a champ. So I'm, I wasn't going to say, look, we're ahead now. I don't know. Uh, let's close the show like a champ. And he went out there and as they say, nuts and guts. <laughs> How did you feel seeing him putting that performance on those championship rounds? I loved he it. I think it, it, it was good. I mean, it, it's something that every fighter needs. You know, if you're getting a knockout, 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 and then you get in there with a guy who's at a high level, and you don't knock him out, and he gets you past round eight, what are you going to do? I mean, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs>